Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another podcast with Amoda Ma. Hello, Amoda. Hi, Gabby. So it's been a while since we've done a podcast, but here we are. Um, today, we are going to talk about personality types and spiritual awakening. Um, we're going to be exploring whether it's easier for certain personality types to awaken than other types. Are there certain traits and tendencies that are more oriented towards the dissolution of ego identity? Is the doorway to awakening the same for all individuals, even though personal characteristics vary, vary widely? And has the personality does the personality have anything at all to do with the recognition and abiding in true nature? So we're going to talk, we're going to touch on astrology, gene keys and human design. We're probably going to touch on the dosha system of Ayurveda and even kind of, kind of allude to the Enneagram among others. You know, it has to be said at this stage, as we were talking about it beforehand, we're not going to be going into the specifics. So we're not going to break down each of the astrological signs and say, yes, this person, this type is ideal for awakening and this person, this type is not. And the same with all of them. You know, some of these things Amoda particularly knows more about than than others. I know very little about some of these things, for instance, the Enneagram. Um, but so it's more to kind of unpack a bit the, the generalities, really, some of the more broad kind of uh, aspects of the conversation. So let's let's jump into this. Um, Amoda, where are we going to start with this? Where Where's a good place to begin? There's a, I would say, delicate dance or edge between self and no self. In other words, the personhood, the personality, you know, as the personhood expresses itself and how the individuation, uh, operates and the no self, which we would say is true nature. I think there's a delicate dance between the two that is worth an exploration. I, I don't think there is a definitive answer. And I don't think, um, as far as I know, there, there are any, uh, there's any research on it or uh, anything written about it or any knowledge about it. But I find it quite an interesting topic, which is why I suggested it, <laughs> um, and certainly worthy of exploration. Is there, the question is, is there potentially a relationship between the personhood, the personality, the type of person one is, and the uh, non-personality, the infinite true nature that we all ultimately are. You could say the personality is the is the um, is specific to the individual. It's unique to the individual with all its nuances. That's one sacred geometry, and that's what we can explore a little. And true nature is universal. Yeah, there's no. There's this kind of true nature and that kind of true nature. True nature is true nature. Um, so what is the relationship? O uh, only because it's it, the interesting thing is it's the person, the personhood, <laughs> with all the levels and layers of its uh, human uh, uniqueness that is, if you like, on the path of seeking awakening. Now, is there a type of person, a type of uh, a person with certain characteristics or certain traits um, or certain uh, psychological makeup that 
is more, if you like, attuned or closer or easier to awaken or not. <laughs> I think it's worthy of a little bit of a conversation. And, and what do we mean by uh, a personality? Uh, first of all, we have to understand or, or, or perhaps agree that each of us comes in with a unique imprint. Some of it is uh, conditioned by our conditions, our parents, our family, our geography, and so on, our education. And that forms, you know, and, and whatever lessons we've learned or whatever hardships we've come against or whatever traumas we've experienced. Some of our personality, if you like, is shaped by that or influenced by that. And some of it is prior to that conditioning. It's either very, very early at birth or prior to birth in the womb. And then prior to that, even the imprint that we come in with our, if you like, karmic tendencies. So we do each have a unique imprint. So it's not just on the surface, personality on the surface, but personality at the deepest, the sacred geometry we come into. And that's where um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the doshas of Ayurveda, uh, the enneagram, uh, astrological imprint, gene keys, and so on. These are not something that we become; it's something that we already are, at least on the level of the individuation. They're all. Um, clues or keys of reading or understanding uh, our tendencies, yeah, our, the particular flavor and texture that, that we each are. You know, some people are more fiery so, on a very basic level. Some people are more earthy. Some people are more in the air realm. Uh, of course, this is just one layer, and then there are many other layers. So I think it's it's relevant because, well, actually inside of all that, and I know I'm kind of moving along here, mm, it's okay. um, a little bit like a river, but um, we'll, we'll try and find a sort of doorway that opens up to something. Um, but but I think inside of, of everything that we're, or at least I'm mentioning here, it's it's more about how the individual ego structure forms. Uh, because whilst there's a universal, if you like, uh, mechanism that forms the ego structure, for each individual the ego with its various defense structures is going to be different. And that's where something like the Enneagram comes in or even astrology comes in, uh, astrological imprint. Yeah, we're not talking about predictive astrology. Yeah, The defense structures are different for each individual and there are certain conglomerates of defense structures that make up a particular type, if you like. And each of us, I think, needs to understand our own ego structure and the way that defendedness, uh, what the way those defense structures are operating in life. And that's valuable in the process or the journey of the undoing of those defense structures or the willingness for those to be undone. Yeah, because very often there's this idea that awakening or freedom is just a bolt of lightning that comes, <laughs> yeah, or we'll call it grace, whatever. And uh, actually the, it's more beneficial to understand what our own defense structures are, how the ego structure forms itself 
and how it operates on a unique individual level to allow us to, or to facilitate the undoing of that in life, in the journey of life. And that facilitates the awakening that is so sought after. You know, we can give some examples, right? <laughs> oh, roll on, let's give some examples. <laughs> roll on, I have some, some things examples. to say, but I'm not going to interfere with your, with your watery flow. <laughs> um, uh, examples. Um, well, I'll use myself as an example. I always do. Very good. Very good. <laughs> um, I would say that my one of my pri- primary defence structures. In other words, the way that I would defend from anything that might hurt, uh, and in my case, that was being seen for who I was, for, yeah, being seen, exposing myself, being honest, being intimate, or being demanded of if there was any need of me, uh, <laughs> my defence structure would be. Uh, I guess retreat, yeah, retreating, going yeah. into my shell. Now, retreat is and going into one's shell is the need for space, yeah, the need for my space, the need for being left alone. That's a, a defense structure. When we examine that, that's a very um, air quality. <laughs> Yeah. So someone like myself who has five planets in my natal astrological chart, all in air signs, there's an indicator there. Um, In the Enneagram, I'd be an Enneagram five, which is very much the need for space, the need for solitude, um, which on one hand is a beautiful thing because it takes us into the deep self. But on the other hand, can be a defense structure. Yeah. So uh, for somebody else, uh, anger is a defense structure. Yeah. Anger, rage, attack, putting up a wall, uh, you know, my will against your will. That's a very strong defense structure. So, and so I could I could say then, uh, <clears throat> whether that comes through astrology or whatever, my defense structure would have been too big, too in a watery kind of, you know, with the Piscean moon to get lost in to a tendency towards addiction because addiction was oblivion. Oblivion was escape. Escape was defense. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So again, we can probably find the correlate for that in one of those systems. I think the Enneagram would describe that very well. So these are just small examples. It's yeah, it's not the be all and end all. But these these, you know, these kind of insights. So let me just say this. Mm. You see, then then you take you take something like um like the five Enneagram and, and this particular defense strategy as I as I was just describing. The 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 sort of the edge, that's why I said it's a delicate edge. On the one hand, that's a defense structure that is uh operating and can be seen in relationship, in relationship to others, in relationship to the world, in childhood, um, and so on. And is a, uh, you know, when it's kind of unconsciously operating, it, uh, it, uh, if you like, keeps the ego structure intact. Yes. And then on the other hand, yeah, that's, that's the sort of delicate dance. That particular ego structure is more, is, if you like, closer to the void of being yeah because emptiness solitude 
aloneness is very close to the void of beingness. So it's it's the kind of structure that would either feel very isolated and very um, alone in a, let's say, negative sense, an isolation, alienation, and so on. But on the other hand, if it has the capacity to really soften into that, it's a doorway into the void of being. Yeah? Mm. And so that's where... The That's where you exp- that was where you, you went. <laughs> the actual experience of awakening is not although it's the same awakening, the doorway is not always the same. That was my doorway. I fell into the void of being. I f- dissolved and died into emptiness. That's why when I speak about it and it sounds so, I don't know, otherworldly or or kind of something and 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 then you know, the response is sometimes, oh, I want that, but I can't yes. quite get there. It's not always appropriate for each individual. Yeah, it's but, not uh, always uh, the doorway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 10,000 questions arise. Uh, um, okay. So just on, let, let's just get to that point. Uh, the, the existential void, now you've talked about this a million times, and I know that your doorway was the doorway that you just referred to which was the isolationism, the pulling back into being alone in a negative way. And that kind of compelled you or graced you to meet that void. Is the void that needs to be met the same, but the doorway is different? I would say yes. The void is the void. That's what so I there mean. are 10,000 doorways, but only one... One one void, let's say. There's yes. only one garden, yes. but there are ten thousand doorways to that garden. I and do then think so, what yes. you're discuss what you're what you're positing here in a sense is is actually, you know, we've already eradicated our argument about about the uh, personality types in a sense, because what you're saying is that self knowing is more important than the type. It's not the type that actually matters. It's not the dosha that ultimately matters. It's not the Enneagram that ultimately matters. They're the doorways, but they're not what ultimately matters. What matters is turning around and meeting our tendencies. And there the tendency is the doorway. Yes. Yes, I do think so. I think what's more important, actually, uh, than the personality type, yeah. however we describe that personality type, is for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, there are some ego structures that are more fragile than others. And we come in with that imprint. Now, is that a personality type or is it some karmic imprint? Yeah. Which over lifetimes, that ego structure has become a little more permeable. When I say fragile, I mean permeable. Permeable because if we look at it in terms of lifetimes, which I, I'm, I'm not really yeah, one for the linearity of lifetimes, but let's say that this individuation, every individuation that emerges from the void, the beingness, the totality, is is born of the one. So it's whether it's this particular one that's reincarnating, yeah, or whether it's just reincarnation is not. Um, affiliated to to an individual self, it's you know many cells. It just, ring. It yeah, so we hold, to be you. Yeah, yeah, we hold the imprint. Yeah, it's just that it's been many cycles. Yeah, and we hold that imprint. It's not mine, but it has an imprint in me now. That repetition, I. And I'm I'm really positing this, yeah, and, and just just kind of following a thread of intuition here. That repetition, in a way, brings a certain 
let's call it openness <laughs> to the ego structure because it has become, if you like, on some level, that repetition, it has come to see, even if it's on a deep unconscious, subconscious level, that the impermanence of things and the clinging to experience, the being titillated or enamored or entranced by experience, experience on a physical level, experience on a mental level, experience on an emotional level, experience on a, a cumulative level, experience on an entertainment level, experience on a, a knowledge level, experience on a, you know, a, let's say a pleasure seeking level. Yeah. That becomes a little bit tiresome. Yeah. We kind of subconsciously are almost ripe. We are ripe for something beyond. Yeah. And I think that creates a, a more permeable ego structure. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really out there here with my you are out there, honey. Flow, but I'm I'm I, I don't know. I'm kind of pulling on my own deep um journey, if you like. Yeah. So this is a, a possibility what's being suggested here. But I do think there are ego structures that are maybe weaker, more fragile, more open, more permeable. This is neither uh, saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying how it is. If you like on the on the negative side, a weaker yes, yes, yes. Or, of or, course. or more fragile ego structure means that I don't have a strong sense of self. And in everyday life, that makes me a doormat or makes me timid or makes me uh, uh, insecure. Um, more prone to breakdown, more prone, prone, to, prone break to suicide, down. more Absolutely. prone to mental illness, more yes. prone to neurosis, more prone, prone to all of those, yes. you know, what are considered the problem people in today's society and yes. every society, really. Yes. And so that can be the flip side, the negative side, if you like. But it can also, if we know ourselves, yeah, we go deep within and start to work with that, if you like, or move through that, it can also be a very profound doorway. Yeah. And again, I'm speaking from my own experience because I am one or was one of those. Yeah. And so that can be a doorway where the ego structure comes undone more easily. It's closer to death, if you like. It's closer to psychological death. Yeah. And if you look at something like the gene keys system, which is quite a complex system and we don't have all the knowledge of it, but we have uh, some knowledge and understanding of it, again, at least on an intuitive level, um, you know, whoever's interested can look it up, but it is quite complex. But there are gateways in the psychophysiological mechanism associated with our genetic coding. And some of those gateways are closed and some of those gateways are open. And each incarnation, each incarnated individuation has a unique um, display, if you like, of those gateways. And you and I know, Kavi, and I think we both have this, we have very open gateways. Yeah. Yes. Um, mine, I think mine are all open. So openness is actually very, very um, natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, it has certain functional uh, idiosyncras idiosynchronies that 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 means that you know it, it, in the on a worldly level, certain characteristics are. Uh, of of I don't know strength or empowerment or uh, confidence or whatever they might be that society loves uh, in order to be successful are are not at the forefront. Yeah, 
but there's another quality. So again, we're using very personal examples um, because we don't know all the types, <laughs> but I, I just think that, that, yeah. And I, you know, and then you mentioned, I think those who are perhaps on the edge of society or we could say they're artists, <laughs> you know, the artists of this world, the mystics of this world, the, you know, the, the outsiders in some way, or in the old culture, that would be the shamans, you know, perhaps that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Maybe that's oh, the boy. frequency holders. I, I, I don't know, but I think it's, it's worth, um, you know, and let's just look at, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know we're jumping around, but let's just, just mention for, for a moment or two, babies, babies <laughs> who are very open. Their ego structure hasn't formed yet. Yes, there's an imprint. Yeah. Some babies come in angry and some babies come in more cheerful and joyful, but really a quality of babies beyond their particular little imprint is openness. Their ego structure has not formed yet. The ego structure forms, I think, around the ages of five to seven. Yeah. That's when we become <laughs> who we are on a personality level. Yeah. Um, that openness of the psychological structure is what gives babies the qualities that are the same qualities, the qualities of awakening, joy, flow, the ability for emotions to flow without sticking. Yeah. Everything is experienced, innocence, uh, acute, sensorial, yeah, um, experience with, that can be delight, uh, yeah, kind of ecstasy, really. Yeah, yeah all, all of that. So, uh, 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 unconditional love, <laughs> yeah. um, aliveness, vibrancy. There's a natural state of awakeness in that that isn't self recognized. It can only be recognized when we've developed the mental, psychological faculties for that. Yeah? But it's a natural state of awakeness. I think if we perhaps look at some, um, call them primitive cultures, but I don't mean that really in that sense. Let's say... Uh, original like, cultures. Uh, uh, yeah, original cultures. As far aboriginal, as we know. As far yeah. as we know, aboriginal cultures. I think the Aborigines are probably the best example of that. There, and again, I don't know much about it because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't uh, interacted with Aboriginal cultures. But as far as I can get a sense of, that's a very natural state of awakeness. Yeah, it's uh, very attuned to the totality, to beingness, to the oneness, to. Um, Again, there's an innocence in it and, and so on and so on. These are all examples of a less formed ego identity. And as the individual progresses, develops through life, and as society or civilization develops, that ego identity becomes stronger. We become to be identified by our culture, by our opinions, by our beliefs, by uh, many, by our education, uh, and so on. So ego identity gets stronger. So I think this idea, if you like, of mm. of uh, the density of ego structure, or the or the the more permeability of ego structure is, is, is kind of perhaps fundamental. How we measure that, I don't know. I don't think it's about measuring it. I think it's about knowing it in ourselves. 
Do, uh, what do you mean? What's this measuring exactly? Well, we can't exactly measure the density of somebody's ego structure and say, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you've we... got a little more work to do. <laughs> you've got a little more ego. You've got structure. more ego. So you're going to go, you're going to have to take longer on your spiritual journey. <laughs> oh, man, there's, there's, a, there's a, you've, you've really stirred my hornet's nest of, of the mind here. In in many ways, I don't come with a fixed idea, but when you talk about the, for instance, the Aboriginal culture, or you know some of the earlier peoples, you 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 see less concern or interest or anything in what astrological type or enneagram or <clears throat> gene keys. Any of those those people are, and what I hear you saying is that that's for a whole different number of reasons, but also because it's not such an ego driven culture. So that suggests, in some way, if you reverse it, that ego, the the you know formation in these modern societies of the ego structure, is then either exaggerating, exacerbating, or multiplying, or or what is the relationship of these things that we take? We love our systems. Modern human beings love systems, right? And we've got the gene key system. We've got the dosha system. And, you know, we've got the Enneagram. We've got a million different systems, and they all do speak to things, you know, very sp- specifically i know when you know when the doctors have identified me as a as a vata and described what a vata is in the in the ayurvedic system i'm like that's me you've described me absolutely accurately but is that do you know what i'm trying to get at it's like well there's um, there's there's the ego structure which is if you like a symptom (laughs) or a product of development yeah in in our society or you know collectively um and that's primarily made up of defensive structures and those defensive structures psychological s- strategies we should call them yes yes that's good operate to seemingly protect us from anything that we feel will hurt us. And I'm not talking about somebody punching us in the face or something yeah, like that. Psychological pain. And that could be as simple as simply not liking what I'm experiencing. The inability to be with what is, whether it's an emotion, a feeling, an experience, yeah, the experience of life, the inability to be with it, to fully just be with what is, creates a defensive structure to protect us psychologically from what is. Yeah, so a baby and a let's say Aboriginal culture, doesn't have that, hasn't developed that yet. The ability to be with what is, which is what the whole spiritual path is, the, 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 something like the understanding of the Ayurvedic doshas which has a physiological component mm. to it, as well as a psychological component to it, is less about the ego structure, but mm. more about our actual um, manifest energy, how life force moves in us. It has got to correlate with what we might call personality, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's much more physiological. Mm. It's how we digest, it's how we perceive, it's how we assimilate. But of course, digestion, perception and assimilation all happen not just physically, they happen mentally and emotionally. So it's it's the whole system. And I think the, the as well, you you know this as well as I do, um, if not more so, 
the uh, Ayurvedic uh, is it the rishis, the, yeah, mm-hmm. the ancient yes. rishis, they had deep knowledge of this. And this deep knowledge and deep wisdom served them, not because they were looking at ego structure, but it served them to find balance and harmony on all levels of being. Um, Mm. So that is valuable. (laughs) That is valuable to know that. And, And I don't know if Aboriginal cultures have that. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe it's to do with the... Uh, I don't know, whatever song sings them into birth, whatever, mm. yeah, uh, or whatever, I don't know. It's, it's probably also the case that uh, the closer you are to harmony, inner harmony and outer harmony, the less concerned you are about what's pulled you away because you're not out of harmony. It's the point of, of our obsession with everything is that we're out of alignment and harmony within ourselves and outside ourselves because there's only one thing happening and that causes us, doesn't it? It's that is the fundamental sort of self-referencing problem. Maybe there isn't a problem at all anyway, but if we feel as if there's a problem because we feel disconnected, we feel separate, we feel, you know, and that can apply to any of the star signs, let's say. You don't have to be an earth sign or an air sign or a water sign to feel disconnected. You might feel it in your nuanced way, which is the point about knowing yourself. Know what what it is that you, you know, how it is that you feel kind of, if you like, disconnected. It's an easy thing to say, but that is alienated is 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 the correct term. And there, there's the doorway again. Mm. Whereas I, you know, talking glibly about the Aboriginal culture, using that as an example of a of a kind of primal state that is connected within mm-hmm. itself, it's harmonious with the outside, with nature, with the cosmos, with what the stars doesn't need to know necessarily what the stars are doing, although that might be useful as well. But actually, it's in relationship all the time to those. Whereas we're, that seems to be part of our intrinsic problem. Yes, yes, precisely. Again, it's pointing to the <laughs> many defense structures, uh, strategies that the, it's not just the modern human being, but mm. as humanity has developed over time, um, the many defense strategies that, that, that they're like layers of, of perception. I mean, veils of perception veil upon veil upon veil of perception that then disconnects us from the totality, from the totality of the beingness, that the one beingness that that informs us all. And so we become more and more reduced into our individual identity. So then we almost have to go through that individual identity to to start to, mm. to move through it. And, and hence yeah, hence the obsession with what kind of person I am and what kind of type I am and if I understood myself more. And some of that is counterproductive and some of it is valuable. It's again, it's the same thing that we've pointed to in different uh, podcasts is that if you get stuck in the realm of self, then those systems, that astrology or that Enneagram or any of those kind of systems can actually, from feeling like they're liberating, can actually become the next prison, from one prison to another prison. And that's the point, is not to get stuck in any of those systems. They're only, only, what are they, boats? They're only ships to get you to the shore of unity, aren't they? Yes, because the, the the danger of that is, well, I I know my type now. I yeah. Know how, yeah, that's who I am. I can't help it. I was born that way, you know, or I was created that way. And that that's exactly what you're speaking of. That's not mm. what we're talking about. The understanding it's 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 yeah, to understand the doorway. What is it that I'm holding up, and what is a veil of, uh, what is a veil, in me? What veil am I looking through? Because this is about undoing the veils. That's also a kind of, you know, there's a karmic thing in there that you were sort of referring to earlier. 
you know that is the, that is part of the karma you know and part of the the the, the work if if there is any work of each human being each individuation is to realize the nature of their own karmic patterns which is the st- strategies and structures that you're talking about not the specifics of uh, one's karma but actually the fact that one's involved in a karmic dance endlessly through the individual patterning that we're talking about and there there again there's the doorway yes. you wake up to your own kind of karma and something ends yes. but still there's because i was going to ask this i mean just, just just as we're moving through this i would be really very interested to find out of of a survey of all the awakened teachers let's say around at the moment to see what star sign they are what astrological sign they are um what uh, enneagram for instance they are what gene keys type they are i i actually think that that would be a you know a very interesting study to do and if anybody out there wants to take that study on i challenge you, uh, would you go and find out yeah, and come well, back and we'll a, do a podcast with you. That's a fabulous PhD project. Project. I mean, if I if I was still in my PhD days, which is a very, very, very long time ago now, I, I would I would actually make that into an interesting project. Wouldn't it? I mean, I know that somebody like Steve Taylor, um, who's written a couple of books and mm-hmm. know, people may have heard of, uh, he he's done some research. Um, I don't think it's quite that but he has done research on types of awakening uh conditions for awakening uh levels if you like or intensity of awakening um you know what what's been the catalyst uh what's been the 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 not the kind of person but the yeah the the situation are there certain situations i think he's done some extensive research into that i don't think it quite goes to the place of you know examining enneagram and genetic mm, coding mm. and that i mean that's on a whole other level but it would be fascinating <laughs> yeah the, um yeah who knows because uh, because sorry you were going to say something i think all i wanted to say just on that is is again to just re reaffirm uh, that that what we're really speaking about is bringing light to the shadow, <laughs> bringing oh, light yes. to those areas in ourselves that we can call shadow realms, but that which we can't see, the veils of perception, the 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 layers of defense strategies, everything that prevents us from knowing uh, the 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 one beingness that informs us all that yeah that is beyond this individuation so it really is about bringing light to that so anything that assists in it is 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 helpful but it's not a reason or an excuse to re-identify with that self and say oh yeah this is me this is how i am and i can't help it well, yes <laughs> No, I mean, let me just, I, I can bear testimony to that as well, because, you know, when I, when I've discovered as you've, you've helped me, because you know quite a lot about astrology, you know, and allowed me to see the nature of my Piscean moon, which means, you know, many different things, tendency to merge with things, tendency to get addicted to things, et cetera, et cetera. And, the, and, and the Virgo and rising, you know, all these things. So as an Aquarian, you know, to to understand some of those, some of the aspects of myself, and then as a as an Ayurvedic type, to be a Vata, very prone to flightiness, very prone to anxiety, very pl- prone to fear and mind running off into the into the things, and all of those things have been absolutely exquisitely valuable to me. And on the other hand, haven't made a blind bit of difference to any wake awakening that has happened here because I've still had to meet the very fact of life, the very fact of my experience, the very fact of the, the you know, that I want to kind of strategize a way to survive psychologically in this world. And I've had to meet that regardless of any type that I am. And there's the rub. Yes. Again, I I go back to the beginning of our conversation, which is this delicate dance between the two. I would say that, and again, I can't be absolutely certain, but I'm positing that the many different forms of expression 
at that we find in various awakened individuals, awakened teachers, spiritual teachers, of which there is an increasing plethora, yeah? The many different flavors of that isn't because there's a different type of awakening, yes. but because of this unique yeah. way <clears throat> that it has taken place and the unique structure that has been the very doorway for that awakening. And therefore, it gets slight, expressed slightly differently for each individual. That's why, as and I'm speaking now to those seekers who may see this teacher and that teacher or jump around from this one or this YouTube or that one and say, oh, well, that one's got it, that one hasn't got it, this one says it like this, this one says it like that, and they're either confused by it or they're comparing it or so on and so on. I'm saying this is why, because it's uniquely coming through, not only coming through the expression of this particular vehicle, but also in the way that it took place, the doorway that it took place. But it's always pointing, if it's if it's a genuine awakening, to the same. Mm. Yeah. So we, we have to have a very broad view. And once we have an understanding of the myriad of incarnations and individuations and, 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 and everything that we're speaking about here, then we're less likely to uh, mm. Mm. compare criticize, elevate, denigrate, but actually listen to that which is beyond mm -hmm. the expression, if you like, because mm -hmm. it really is going to be different for each, each, it's like each, each flower, each flower is unique and yet the fra and each fragrance is unique and yet there's something universal, flowerness. The fragrance yeah. of flowerness is universal. The nectar is the same. Oh, they all come from the same garden. But, yeah, but they're all different. Unique. Well, this is this is very good because at, right at the beginning of this podcast, I was going to uh, reverse engineer what we were talking about and say that it, yes, the door, the doorway through one's self, through one's whatever doorway that we discussed is going to be a different doorway to the same garden, let's say, as a metaphor. But then, the like you're just saying, this was reverse engineering, but then the expression of that garden is always, is still going to come through the individual, yeah, with all of its characteristics. Yes. You're, you're, you, I mean, I've seen so many different teachers and it is easy to get into a kind of comparison thing, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of almost part of the nature. Go. It's also easy to say, this is the way you do it. Yes. If you follow this practice, if you follow this scripture, if you follow this teaching, if you follow this tradition, if you follow this method, you're going to get there. And that's not true. Yeah. Because that's alluding to what we're speaking of now. The doorway is always unique. You have to know thyself is more important than which practice you follow or which tradition you follow. Yes, I, I yeah? agree with that. Yeah, there isn't because, one size fits all. No, because what might work for one and then another applies that and thinks, well, it's worked for them. You know, then it must work for me. And they spend their life banging their head against the wall, thinking that that's the way to liberation. And all they've ended up with is a very sore head. You know, it hasn't, it, it hasn't, it hasn't kind of worked because their way was utterly different. Yes. And then there is the direct way, which is the pointing to the primary mechanism of ego which is resistance to what is. Yeah, that cuts through all this. <laughs> yeah, Resistance to what is, is the primary mechanism. That resistance and the way the me mechanism operates and the conditions in which it operates and, you know, the situations and relationships within which it operates is going to be unique for each individual. 
Yeah. But we must see that within ourselves. And then that's not a method. That's a clear seeing. It's yeah. a clear seeing of the core structure of ego. Get to the to the root. It's yeah, the you root. You talk about the root. It's the root. Yeah. But we often can't get to the root until we've actually seen and worked through the various layers. Again, it all comes down to surrender. Not surrender to mm. anything, but the surrender of the defense mm. structures. Yes, but 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 this is this is very true because you know what the reason that we brought this podcast to the table <clears throat> is not for some titillation. It's also because it, you know, whereas you just demolished most of the podcast by saying just get to the root. But actually, it's not a titillation to discuss these things because actually, you know, self-knowledge on this level that we're talking about, yeah, is 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 almost pri it is primary. It is in there. Because the deeper that you can go into self-knowing, the more likely something is to open. It just does. It just mm -hmm. starts to open doorways. And those doorways at some point are going to open you to the fact that you have to face something very core about yourself. We, it won't happen unless it comes as a bolt of lightning, which I wouldn't wait for that. I don't think that's worth waiting for, yeah, because it's not somewhere else. It's in you. But this self-knowing, that's why that's such a fundamentally profound statement. Know thyself means know who you are, know your characteristics, know your defense mechanism, know your strategies, know your weaknesses, know your you know, strengths, and all of that kind of stuff. Don't identify with it. It's what you've done in the past, but well, the Be more open. you see the structures that make up this defended, I don't know, whatever, self, whether it's a fearful self or an angry self or a striving self or a lonely self, they're all defensive structure, defended structures. Um, the more you see that, the more you really, uh, you know, not just see it, but feel it, the more you come to see the prison, the more you come to experience it as a prison. Yes. And then there's a willingness to be free of that, not by fixing it or changing your personality, but that's what brings you closer to the root of it, which is universal root, yeah? Mm. The resistance to what is, yeah? The, the, the craving and aversion that wraps itself around this moment, this moment, this moment. But that's what brings you close to it. That's what brings you to the core. Without that, there's no, there's no prison to see. The prison's just operating unconsciously. Yes. Maybe there's some vague sense that there's something <laughs> more or some more happiness mm. or some more peace or something, or some idea of enlightenment, which is just a striving of the self for another persona, another mask, another identity. <laughs> yeah, so we have to go in and in and in. And this is what I mean by, and I think you've heard me say this, you have to be sick and tired of yourself yes. before something can shift. And that sick and tired of yourself isn't just some glib kind of, oh, God, I wish I was different and, I'm, you know, I'm don't, not happy with my personality. No, 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 never mind your personality. Just sick and tired of the various veils and strategies that play themselves out over and over again. To protect you from what? To protect yes. you from the rawness of this moment. That's all it is. The aliveness of this moment that is inherent in this moment, because it is absolutely as it is. That's when you're sick and tired of it. You're sick and tired yeah. of the, the defendedness, the strategies, yeah, the, the layers. Then something can shift. Yeah? Then something can open. That's the openness or the permeability of the ego structure that we started with. Whether you're born with a more permeable ego structure, whether you've become more permeable in your ego structure because actually you're more broken. Yeah, brokenness can go two ways. You can identify with that brokenness and then you become a trauma-identified person, a poor me and a victim, and that can stay like that. Or brokenness can be the doorway to permeability. Well, it, it can, yes, very much yeah. so. As they say, uh, the the <laughs> what was it? The the wounds are where the or the cracks are where the 
light gets light. in all the wood. Yeah, yeah. So Rumi and Leonard Cohen, the uh, the wound is where the light gets in. Yeah. The cracks. Yeah, the the beauty is in the cracks. Yes. I think you said you said it very very well there. I think, and um, maybe we should take that to kind of as a, as a conclusion. Yeah, I think one thing. I, one thing I I I I feel the call to do is to say that if anybody listening has never checked out their gene keys and human design, I I don't know. There's just something absolutely exquisite about it. You get so much self-knowledge in it. You get to know what your lower states of being if are, if you like. It's just a great doorway. And uh, Richard Rudd, who, you know, who downloaded and kind of pretty much created, I think, put together this, the gene keys based on the human design system, is a genius and uh, well worthy of anybody's attention. We met him once and he gave us a reading and it was profound and i have to say it, it was, was profound and has <laughs> lived with us and lit something within us particularly in a moda that has lasted and that was over 20 20 over 20 years ago and it still stayed and it's a perennial truth we don't use it as a system but it doesn't need to be because it's just a living truth somehow and that is mm-hmm. so i i just want to say you know And if there was one person I would love to talk to on this podcast and Richard Rudd ever heard this, I I would so love to to hear his genius wisdom because it's just a fantastic system. Yes. Anything else to say, Moda, at this stage? No, I think that's enough. (laughs) Yeah, I think it, it, it is enough. I actually, on some certain level, think we've only just kind of scratch the surface of this. Uh, but we'll see what happens, uh, whether we come back to it or not. We'll probably move on in our inimitable Aquarian way. We'll move on to something else, some other juicy subject. I think, I, you know, I hope people got some value out of this. Um, Certainly and- food thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't take it as a, as a, as a truth or anything. It's just uh, the possibility of an exploration deeper inside because the fundamental thing is to know oneself and not to get too attached to that knowing. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Amoda. That was a, that was a, a beautiful, juicy conversation. I always, always love speaking to you, as you know. Um, Take care, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, like the podcast, share it wherever you can, and uh, we'll see you again as soon as possible for another podcast with Amodamar. Take care. Goodbye. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.